Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to implement custom trading indicator using Python language for trade change notifications and we're going to apply this to Bitcoin price movements as an example. So for this I'm going to use something very simple yet still somehow effective and that would be the three moving average comparison to detect the trend direction. In this method we are going to use three different moving averages. One we will call it the fast changing moving average and the second one let's call it the medium changing moving average and the third one is the slow changing moving average. So comparing these three different moving averages we are going to conclude on the trend of the price. As you can see when we have an uptrend we have a certain order of these three moving averages. So we have the fast one then below it the medium one and then below is the slowest one. In this configuration we have an uptrend. If these moving averages have an opposite order, meaning we have the slow moving average up, then we have the medium and then the fast one below, it means that we have a downtrend. So as this example shows, as long as we have a certain order of these moving averages, we can consider that we have an uptrend until this order is disrupted or not existent anymore, like in this particular case here, in which case we can say that the trend is changing and it might be unclear trend or simply reversing into a downtrend. So the idea is to detect when a certain order of moving averages is taking place, showing an uptrend or a downtrend, and to send a signal to our phone using a dedicated email account. So remember the idea here is to send an alert and the final decision to execute the trade is up to the trader. And this is what algorithmic trading is all about, saving you the pain of staying behind the screen during all these hours, looking for trends and trend reversals. Especially if you are doing this as a side hustle, you might not have the time to observe different currencies all day long. And using this method makes things a lot easier, since if you are looking for a certain setup on the market, you are going to be alerted by the program wherever you are. Now, of course, if you are willing to use this method on a more advanced and complex indicator, you can modify the program and add whatever suits you and the strategy you will be using. Just for the sake of simplicity, in this video, we are only going to implement the three moving averages method. So this is our Jupyter Notebook file. We are going to import pandas at first and read the um, data file. It's a CSV file using the read underscore CSV function. So I'm loading the Bitcoin US dollar prices and going from 2017 up to 2021. And I'm checking the state of my data. If I have um, missing values in my data frame, which is not the case here. And we can print the data frame just to make sure what we are reading, that we have read the file properly. So we have the uh, date and the opening, the high, low, close and the volume for each candlestick, meaning for each day. Then we need to compute the uh, three different moving averages. So I'm going to import pandas underscore TA for technical analysis. And I'm going to define a new column in my data frame, which is the moving average 20, then a new one, which is moving average 30 and the moving average 60. So you might not agree with 20, 30 and 60 as the three moving averages that should be used for this method. If you have different values in mind i mean if you want for example to use a moving average of 40 bars then 50 bars then 100 bars you can of course change these and modify these as you would like so i'm going to use 20 30 60 as a setup and i'm using the exponential moving average here also you might want to use the simple moving average if you prefer so so I'm going to use the exponential moving average to give more weight for the newest price movements and less weight for the oldest values. So I'm going to feed those with the closing prices for each candle and the length is going to be 20 here and then 30 and then 60. Then just to make sure that everything was added properly to our data frame, I'm going to print the tail or the last 10 rows of our data frame and I can see that we still have the initial columns plus the three new columns that we have added, the three different moving averages, 20, 30 and 60 bars. Then I need to define a new function that we are calling mySig for my signal. So it's going to compute our signal. Is it a buying? Is it an uptrend signal or a downtrend signal? So if um, the moving average of 20 bars is less than a moving average of 30, 
and less than the moving average of 60 in which case we are going to return minus one this is a selling signal or a downtrend and in the opposite setup meaning if the fast moving average is higher than the 30 which is the uh, medium moving average and higher than the uh, slowest moving average 60 bars then in this case we have an uptrend and we are going to return plus one in this case otherwise in all the other cases we return zero because we don't have any clear signal and now we can use this function we can apply it to our data frame on the axis equal one and we can store the signal which is the result of this function for each row into the signal column so this is just a new column that we are adding to our data frame it's always nice to uh, be able to plot things and check things visually to see if everything is working as intended so we are going to use again the plot lie uh, libraries i'm taking simply a small slice from 100 from index 100 up to 1000 we are going to plot the uh, candlesticks and the three different moving averages so if we plot these we're going to have something like that so it's working properly we can zoom in a smaller slice and check how the three moving averages are changing so for example here we have the fast one the medium and the black one is the slowest moving average and as we can see they are taking this certain order when we have an uptrend so as soon as we have a switch for example one of the strategies we can use like uh, somehow a naive strategy because it's counting on only one single indicator uh, is that when we have a switch from one order to another we can start our let's say buying execution and wait until the order is messed up and this is where we are going to close our trade so this is one of the strategies that you might want to uh, try on this uh, indicator however the purpose of this video is not to present a strategy it's to uh, make a custom indicator that's going to send alerts directly to your phone so now that we know that this is working we can carry on with the code and start the part where we are going to download new candlesticks right now from the market analyze these compute the moving averages check the signal that we have and if the signal is plus or minus one send the signal via emails to a dedicated email account that is synced on our phone and this way we can get an alert as soon as we have a certain setup on the market so to do this i'm going to use the oanda api uh, this video is not sponsored by oanda nor am i advertising a broker over another broker it's simply that it happened that i was using this and they also offer uh, these for a demo account so you don't have to put real money in there if you want to try a certain strategy you can simply open a, a demo account or a practice account and you can generate what we call a token you can generate this on the website this is basically like a secret code that would give you access from python to your practice account and this is important because it's needed to download the live data from that particular broker now i know other brokers have also different apis they have different libraries i'm not very familiar with the um, the other tools they are offering so this is why we are using oanda for this video and we are going to use an email to send emails from and to a certain email address so i'm going to use gmail uh, i'm importing the smtp library here you can put the gmail address that we are going to use to send emails you will also need the password so i'm not putting the passwords here nor the uh, email that i'm using then you can put sent from a certain name to this is the destination email so i'm sending myself an email to the same mailbox where i'm going to receive this email so no need to use two different emails in this case and the subject simply the email title and don't forget about the token variable here that we are going to use and then the rest of the code i'm going to put into one function because we're going to use it uh, later on so we have to include all of this into a function let's call it some job and when we call this function uh, everything is going to be executed as we want it so inside this function we are going to use something called candle collector and this function basically downloads the latest candlesticks from the oanda platform so we're going to provide the token that we have generated for our account we're going to provide the uh, pair that we are going to trade so i simply inserted here the symbol us dollar underscore bitcoin it can be something different 
and we're going to check which time frame we are going to use so this is the third parameter is it the daily charts or the daily data you are going to use or the um, four hours data and so on so in this case this part here has nothing to do with the previous part of the code so the previous part of the code was simply to explain what we are doing to check the three moving averages and so on so we don't have to have any data to load into our program to make it work you can make everything work just by using this single cell that we are going to explain here so this is the part that's going to download candlesticks using the candle collector compute the moving averages or whatever custom indicator you would like to uh, use and then generate a signal and then if a signal fits into a um, certain criteria just send the signal as a message through an email to your own so again in here i'm using moving averages that are below 60 candles this is why i'm going to uh, define something called candles which are equal to collector dot grab 61 candles remember that we have um, imported from the Oanda candles something called pair then grand then candle collector and this is why we can use these functions here so we're going to grab 61 candles because we don't need more and since candles is some kind of a list we're going to have 61 candles in that list that are zero based as indexes so the candle of index 60 is going to be the last candle of my list and in this case it's the candle that didn't close yet so it's an ongoing candle the price is still floating and changing through that candle i don't want to use that particular candle because we don't know the final state of this candle we're going to use the candle that is just before that one so just before the last candle because it's already closed we already know the volume and what exactly is the closing price of that candle so we're going to use index 59 as the last candle anyway before doing this i'm going to create a new data frame i'll call it df stream and it's going to um, have four columns open close high and low price then for candle in candles we're going to cast these into floats so i have to read the uh, candle.bid.opening price the candle.bid.closing price the candle.bid.high price and so on and I'm going to put these into the uh, DF stream columns. Then for some reason, I had to cast these as float. Can just add these four lines. It does the job. And here we can compute the moving averages. It's either by using the pandas TA technical analysis, as we have seen previously in this video, or simply by using the rolling function and doing the mean or the average for the uh, last 20 candles the last 30 candles and the last 60 candles and storing these into three new columns then we generate the signal which is a new column also into the df stream data frame it's the small data frame that contains the latest candlesticks that we have just downloaded from the broker platform so then we apply the function my signal on the axis equal one and it's going to do the job reading the three moving averages and checking if we have a certain order to generate a buying signal or a selling signal then we can test if the last closed candle just we have said it's the candle of index 59 in this case is equal to one and at the same time the previous candle so the candle 58 didn't have a signal one so we just are entering into the state of these ordered moving averages and we are seeing that it's a buying signal now so it's an uptrend we are going to send the signal to ourselves through an email we're changing the value of the message variable it's going to be a string the signal is one or whatever you want to send yourself otherwise in the opposite direction if we have a downtrend minus one and we didn't have a minus one just be before that before this particular candle the message variable as the signal is minus one and now we have these lines where we are going to use the gmail smtp and the login attributes for our email the user email and the gmail password and we're going to send the email with the particular message variable which is uh, modified at this stage of our code so at the end we can close the server 
Notice that for this to work, sometimes Gmail has a security lock that you have to unlock into your email. So you have to log in to your uh, Gmail account using a browser and unlock the fact that you want to uh, use it using a different interface. So this has to be unlocked from the Gmail user account first. And this is it. This is our function that is called some job. If I call this function, it's going to execute these. So it means it's going to download the last 61 candles here and it's going to compute the three different moving averages. If we have a certain signal, it's going to send us an email. If not, it's not going to do anything. We don't want to launch this um, function automatically every candlestick or every, uh, let's say, five minutes. We have to put it into a scheduling protocol. So we're going to use something called the scheduler. Uh, I've imported something called AP scheduler here. It's very simple to use. We're calling the blocking scheduler function using misfire grace time around 15 minutes, 15 times 60 seconds, meaning 15 minutes. In other words, if Python is trying to send you an email and there's no connection or something is going wrong, we're going to keep retrying every once in a while for around 15 minutes before dropping this task for this particular time and waiting until the uh, some job function is launched again. And this is done using the um, add job function. So I'm going to launch the some job function using the scheduler and its cron type. Then the day of the week, I'm going to uh, launch this function only from Monday up to Friday every four hours, one time every four hours. So I've built this function as if we were using the four hours bar charts. If you want to use it for the daily chart or for any other for the hourly charts, you have to change these values here. Let's consider we are working on the four hours bar charts. So this function, some job is launched every four hours from Monday up to Friday with a delay of five minutes, meaning it's four hours plus five minutes. A jitter, a random jitter of 120 seconds on the execution of the function. So you don't have to include it. Actually, I simply wanted to try it. You must include also the time zone that you are working in. These four hours are going to start at midnight at time zero, and it's going to influence when exactly is this function launched if you change the time zone. Then we start the scheduler. So basically it's going to um, schedule the times where we are launching our sum job function. We don't want to keep downloading nonstop our uh, candlesticks and doing the moving averages and so on. First of all, it's a lot of load on your uh, machine and you will be spamming your own email account with uh, consecutive messages that are being sent from your Python program. So we want to use this only one time every four hours. And in fact, in this case, if you want it to work this way, we have to copy this part right here. Like we're going to put it here. So it's going to be sent only when this condition is uh, available. And this part also going to cut it and put it right here. So this way we are going to receive emails only when it counts, only when we are entering a state of moving averages order, let's say. Okay, so again, you don't have to have anything from the previous parts of this uh, code. The only cell that you are going to need to send emails and to test your candle states, if you have a certain setup, is all included in one single cell, this particular cell here. And this is it for this video. I hope you guys found the information helpful. If so, please leave a comment or a like. If you feel for, you may subscribe also. And until our next video, safe trading and see you next time.